isolation All oh, these things will one day swallow whole Welcome back. So if you've been following my series, you'll notice that there has been quite a few places in the UK that has been used to abuse children. Elm Guest House and Dolphin Square have been the main ones that have been outed in the news. But there's also Concora Boys Home, um, Grafton Close, Coronation House, there is many of them. These children have been abused by people in power, MPs, pop stars and everything. They've even been shipped off to Amsterdam to work in brothels there. And, and if you've noticed, snuff movies as well. The Home Office has played a big part in this as well because they funded one of the organisations, PI, the Paedophile Information Exchange. They were given information of where you could have these parties and where it was all safe and everything. I've even got an uh, interview that I will show later on with founder of Pi, Tom O'Carroll, trying to explain himself, defending how a four-year-old can give consent. It is truly diabolical. Before we get into that interview, we're going to have a look at a news report on the Ellen Guest House where two people have actually been charged. Our two men, aged 66 and 70, have been arrested over allegations of child abuse in southwest London during the 1980s. One is a former worker at a boys' home, which was run by Richmond Council in Surrey. The other, a Catholic priest. Operation Fernbridge is looking at claims that senior political figures and others sexually abused boys at the nearby Elm Guest House in Barnes. Porrigo Brown has this report. What happened at Elm Guest House in the early 80s? Today, it's just another family home on a well-to-do suburban row. Back then, it was something else entirely, something darker. It was run by Carol Kassir, who has passed away, and her husband, Haroon, who now lives somewhere else. But run as what? It was billed as a gay-friendly guest house, but the neighbours felt it was something else. They saw posh cars parked outside. Young boys would be brought in and out of parties. But there's more. Some of the boys, it's alleged, were from local care homes, like the one that used to be on Grafton Close, not far away. The police got involved. David Henke broke the story recently. The local police decided to investigate and actually when they realized that they appeared to be something going very wrong they put four undercover detectives inside the guest house as i understand it posing as gay people and when there was a party it's said to be going on they tipped off the police and they raided the place Channel 4 News has spoken to one of the police officers involved in that original raid. He could remember two things about the briefing they received beforehand. Number one, they were told that the raid involved a case to do with the grooming of boys and girls. Number two, they were warned that high-profile people could be inside the guest house. Mary Moss used to run a charity that worked with children abused in care homes. She interviewed boys who told her they'd been brought from care homes in that part of London to Elm Guest House to be abused and to be filmed. So they were well used to uh, being, being treated like, you know, dogs with a, a tag on that just says, abuse me. Um, that they went to... Uh, the guest house um, and you know as one boy said you know we we would um, go in and then they would set it all up so the boys were being made to participate in in porn films in the yeah, house yeah which was the money making industry at the time a few days ago the police took away her files relating to elm guest house 
This morning, we asked the former owner what he knew about these allegations. I'm a reporter with Channel 4 News. I thought so. Can you tell me, just very quickly, it's just a few questions I want to ask you about Elm Guest House. Listen, I've already been touched with PCC. I don't want you to contact me again, and I'm going to report to you. Okay? Thank you very much. Were you aware of what was happening in the Guest House? We've not found enough evidence to prove that high-profile public figures abused boys here. There is this, though, a newsletter that connects Elm Guest House with the Conservative Party. It's from the Conservative Group for Homosexual Equality, a campaign group at the time which included some influential MPs. It was published two months before the raid. A section of it reads, I am glad to publicise another establishment strongly recommended by members, Elm Guest House in Barnes, London. The facilities include a sauna, solarium and a video studio. Rumours of big-name guests here went viral. An online conspiracy theory cottage industry was born, much of it spurious. But then, a few weeks ago, some of which had been just the preserve of conspiracy theorists, became a full, formal police investigation. Today, police from Operation Fernbridge made two arrests. Channel 4 News has been given these photographs of one of the arrests in progress this morning. This is John Stingemore, a former deputy manager at a care home near the guest house in southwest London at the time. The police are examining files from the London borough of Richmond, which was responsible for the care homes in question. Today, they said... We're offering our full support and cooperation to the police. As the investigation is ongoing, it would be inappropriate to comment further. The other man arrested at his home in Norwich is understood to be a Catholic priest, Father Tony McSweeney, who was once a chaplain to Norwich Football Club. In terms of the numbers of victims interviewed by police, this is no Jimmy Savile scandal mark too. In terms of the reverberations, though, it could be. Now, I've actually been in contact with Mary, and she'd explained to me exactly what happened. She was in their office and Carol came in at one point and Carol was needing help with an impending court case. What had happened was her three children had actually been abused at the guest house by these MPs and other stars and she'd seen Mary on TV and wanted help. Now, one of the times that Carol was in Mary's office, Chris Fay was in there as well. Now, to Mary, Chris Fay was just another social worker she just taken him at face value and thought he was wanting to help out. She had no idea about his past. But here's Mary explaining it herself. My name is Mary Moss. I was mentioned a lot yesterday in the child sexual abuse inquiry uh, into the Westminster allegations. Um, I met Carol Kazir in 1989 when she walked into my office. I was a London Development Officer at 20 Compton Terrace, N1 Islington, and uh, she had seen me on the telly, and she said that she wanted me to represent her son and her daughter, who she believed had been taken into care um, to cover up for some MPs being involved in some parties that she'd had and that she'd been treated un unfairly and they said that her son was abused and he said he he wasn't and anyway she got murdered not long after she she left with me some documents they were um, the guest book the signing in book receipts um, Obviously, they were protected under the Police and Criminal Evidence Act. She was dead. It was a very frightening time for myself. There was an advisor in our office who came in to discuss Melanie Klein House. Uh, his name was Christopher Fay. Um, I haven't seen him since 1980, 1991 when I banned him from the NAPIC following some information from the London Borough's Grants Unit. I have been wrongly associated with him in the Child Sexual Abuse Inquiry. Uh, I have notoriously worked for NAPEC. I'm their commercial director. I've set up a flower shop. I set up two art galleries. I'm a professional. He's a crook. Um, I thought what um, Neil did yesterday was completely slanderous, and I went to the child abuse inquiry to tell them that. Okay. So they wouldn't listen. They said put it in an email. Uh, no one else is listening. I'm fed up. I just want a parliamentary budget for the kids. Um, 
pounds a head per child in the country and put an end to all this uh, historical abuse, draw a line under it and as I say it's International Women's Day and what we need is to endorse the United Nations Conventions of the Rights of the Child and have an International Children's Day with parliamentary budget by law. The government stopped the funding for the National Association of Young People in Care in 1993. Mary managed to keep it going by opening two art exhibitions in London. So many of the information that circulates the internet about the Elam Guest House was actually drawn up by the information that Chris Fay seen at Mary Moss's office. Chris was jailed with fraud in 2011. Chris informed Tom Watson of the information that Mary Moss had. Mary explained her situation to Tom, but shortly after the correspondence, Mary's office was raided by the police and all the evidence taken. She had literally boxes of evidence taken and never returned, still in possession of the police. So you see, Chris Fay was never a colleague of Mary Moss. He was in fact a Labour councillor, like his friend Tom Watson. That's how Tom got involved with it all, because Fay told him that Mary had this evidence, why she got raided. Anyway, the information that's going about on the internet, including the famous list, was written up by Chris Fay using the information that he seen in Mary's offices. So it was all written up by him, so I wouldn't trust it. We don't know what information is the truth on this bit of paper or fake, but it's what Chris put together. But because Chris had falsified this evidence, Mary's name was also slandered as well. <sighs> anyway, we're going to continue the story of Richard Kerr. He's going to give some names of the abusers that happened, not just at Ellen Guest House, but Kinkora Boys Home as well. Also, there's this interview with Tom O'Carroll, the founder of Pi. were children, often the most vulnerable, placed in the care of the state only to be betrayed, systematically trafficked to the most powerful men in the land. How many times were you raped? Wow, uh, maybe twice, three times a week. Boys and girls both farmed out to pedophiles like throwaway toys. There would be a group of a group of girls and a group of men. And the men would, would basically single out the girls. Tonight, three victims speak out. Claims of a monumental cover-up. That children were murdered. One of them, the 15-year-old son of the Australian High Commissioner's chauffeur. I just said to him that I think he's been taken by someone high up. And what did that senior policeman say to you? He said to me, you keep saying things like that, you could get hurt. And the secret pedophile brotherhood, who to this day demand their right to have sex with children. What constitutes consent? The willing involvement of a child. It's really quite simple. A sex scandal at the very highest levels of the British establishment. Child sexual abuse victims come forward to point the finger at very powerful men. Serving members of the British Parliament, cabinet ministers, lords, spies, even senior police incriminated in a VIP pedophile ring for the privileged and powerful. It happened to me, it happened to others, and why would it go on for so long? 
Why didn't somebody just step in and say, we need to investigate this? Richard Kerr is now 54 and a clearly damaged man. His life began to fall apart when at the age of nine, he was sent to the now infamous Kinkora Boys Home in Northern Ireland run by men who would later be convicted of the frequent rape of children in their care. How soon did the abuse start when you were sent there? Oh, a week later, maybe. Within a few years, Richard and other boys from the home were being trafficked around the country. You were brought across essentially to be playthings for pedophiles. Getting boy toys. I felt afraid to say no. I, as long as I perform well, they said they'd take care of me. So when you first came to London, Richard, what was the first place you were brought to? Um, the first place? I was taken to um, Dolphin Square. Today, Richard Kerr is bringing us back to the place where he was taken to meet the men who ruled the country. An upmarket apartment complex called Dolphin Square, just minutes from the Houses of Parliament. What happened in here, Richard? What happened in here, I was taken in here, I was told to sit down on the bed, and he started to take my clothes off. It still hurts, doesn't it? Of course it hurts. I've never forget, uh, it, it hurts. Richard was brought here to have sex with politicians and other high-ranking members of the British establishment, including members of the House of Lords. Are any of them still in the Parliament? Um, yeah. Older, very old, Lords. <laughs> Richard was one of dozens of boys and girls, almost all from state institutions, brought to the homes of the rich and powerful to be forced into sex with adults. My soul at that time was being destroyed. And they took away everything I had, everything I had. British police are now investigating compelling evidence that dozens of children suffered similar fates. I am Mr Baker. I am age 11. The happy smile hides a terrible secret. When this video was taken of 11-year-old Esther Baker, she had already been sexually abused for years. At the age of six, a family member took you to other pedophiles, didn't they? Yes. There would be a group of girls and a group of men. And the men would, would basically single out the girls, pick who they wanted, and then we'd, we'd be abused. Raped? Yeah. Um, they did um, anything from from molestation, which is, which is touching and, um, an oral sex to, to full penetrative sex. Esther, now 32, has identified two British politicians who were among her abusers in the early 1990s. The man I'm going to show you the photograph of is a lord, a very senior politician. 
Have a look at this photograph and tell me if you recognise this person. Yeah. Yeah. So you're absolutely clear that this is the man that sexually abused you? Yeah. Over how many years? Over, um, over about five, six years. And him? Yeah. So the photograph I'm showing you now is a, a person who, until very recently, in fact, the last election, was a fairly senior member of a political party in the House of Commons. Yeah. You're saying that that man abused you? Yeah. How can you be so sure? A lot of people might be watching this and thinking, well, she was a little girl. Maybe she's confused. Maybe she genuinely believes what she's saying. But she's confused. What, what do you say to that? I'd say you don't forget those faces. No way. They were powerful people. They were also people who uh, very obviously had formed a group and enjoyed having sex with young children. This man, we'll call Darren, was 15 and in a care home when he met Peter Wrighton, a senior advisor to the government on child development and secretly a member of the Pedophile Information Exchange, a group campaigning to lower the age of consent for child sex. In this home video, Wrighton can be seen grooming teenage boys encouraging them to drink alcohol and engage in sexually suggestive behaviour. Wrighton would supply boys like Darren to VIPs at Dolphin Square. He would be basically told who to go and talk to and what to do and which, with which person. One of those men, also named by other witnesses we've spoken to, was Leon Britton, the former British Home Secretary. One of the most powerful men in the land, Leon Britton should have been prosecuting pedophiles. Instead, according to Darren and other witnesses, he was one of them. He liked boys to dress in women's underwear and then to be in a room alone and discover you in women's underwear and punish you for wearing the underwear. A member of Margaret Thatcher's cabinet? Yes. Raping children? Yes. Their stories may sound unbelievable, but their accounts of the abuse they suffered are being taken very seriously by British police and by a new generation of political leaders. I think there has to be an element of cover-up or conspiracy, call it what you want. Men like Conservative MP Zach Goldsmith. If it's true, and the evidence suggests that it is, yeah. this is, isn't it, the biggest political scandal in British history? I think that's right. I think there's very compelling evidence that very senior people engaged in terrible acts and were then protected by the establishment. I have no doubt at all about that, but I think the genie is out of the bottle. Coming up, from abuse to murder. He sees Martin being led onto a train by a tall, blonde man in his 30s. The link to Australia's High Commissioner. With the number plate Oz1. As the conspiracy deepens. What did that senior policeman say to you? He said to me, you keep saying things like that, you could get hurt. That's next on 60 Minutes. Sadly, we'll probably never know just how many innocent children became victims of the pedophile gang operating at the highest reaches of the British establishment. Certainly, we know of dozens, if not hundreds, of state wards who were trafficked from institutions to be used as playthings of the rich and powerful. But others were literally picked out and abducted off the streets of London, including the teenage son of the chauffeur to the Australian High Commissioner. One of the great mysteries is a case now being reinvestigated by British police. 
the disappearance and almost certainly the murder of a 15-year-old boy named Martin Allen. You smell a cover-up protecting the toffs, don't you? I smell rats of the highest order. Kevin Allen is Martin's brother. At the time Martin went missing, their father Tom was personal chauffeur to the Australian High Commissioner. So this is the car that your dad drove? Yeah. With the number plate OZ1? Yeah, AUS1. One of the perks of their dad's job was a big house here in posh Kensington, right next to the High Commissioner's own residence. What a beautiful idyllic place for a young lad to grow up. Yeah, this is where we lived. But that happy life was about to be shattered. It's the 5th of November, 1979. 15-year-old Martin is heading home from school. A witness tells police he sees Martin being led onto a train by a tall, blonde man in his 30s. He's holding Martin by the scruff of his neck, and the boy is clearly distressed. They only go one stop. They get off here at Earl's Court. And as they're heading out through the station, the man is overheard to say to Martin, don't try to run. The only problem is that witness only comes forward weeks later when he sees the boy's face on the TV news. And of course, by that time, it's too late. The trail's cold and young Martin is never seen again. In the 36 years since your brother disappeared, has there ever been any leads, any information? No. Has his body ever been found? No. No, it's like he, he was abducted by aliens. The police investigation into Martin's disappearance was at best inept. One conversation with the officer in charge has stuck with Kevin. I, I just said to him that I think he's been taken by someone high up in, I don't know, establishment, whether it's a businessman or an official of some sort. And what did that senior policeman say to you? He said to me, you keep saying things like that, you could get hurt. That and sounds my, like a threat. Well, I was like, almost fell off my chair at 17. But my mum and my dad and me, that was it. It was over with the police. Now, police have reopened the case, also acknowledging they have credible evidence of murders committed by the Westminster pedophile ring. These are children. These were children at the time, and they were abused because they were children, because he could get away with it. Former policemen, too, like Kelvin Ashby, are now revealing the extent of the cover-up how their own investigations of politicians and government officials were stopped in their tracks on orders <laughs> from above. My immediate boss told me that the, the decision had been made higher up the chain. Ashby was a detect best in... ...acknowledging they have credible evidence of murders committed by the Westminster... ...like he, he was abducted by aliens. The police investigation into Martin's disappearance was at best inept. One conversation with the officer in charge has stuck with Kevin. I, I just said to him that I think he's been taken by someone high up in, I don't know, establishment, whether it's a businessman or an official of some sort. And what did that senior policeman say to you? He said to me, you keep saying things like that, you could get hurt. That sounds like a threat. Well... I was like, almost fell off my chair at 17. But my mum and my dad and me, that was it. It was over with the police. Now police have reopened the case, also acknowledging they have credible evidence of murders committed by the Westminster pedophile ring. 
these are children. These were children at the time, and they were abused because they were children, because he could get away with it. Former policemen, too, like Kelvin Ashby, are now revealing the extent of the cover-up, how their own investigations of politicians and government officials were stopped in their tracks on orders from above. My immediate boss told me that the decision had been made higher up the chain. Ashby was a detective inspector when he began investigating allegations that a prominent Labour MP, Greville Jenner, now a lord, was sexually abusing a 12-year-old boy taken from a local children's home. Did you want to arrest Jenner? Yes, definitely. Were you stopped from arresting Jenner? Yes. What was it about the boy's story that made you think it was credible? Well, basically, he said that uh, he'd been collected from the children's home many, many times by Jenner, by Jenner in his car. And uh, that was, we, we backed that up. Lord Jenner, who has denied all the allegations, has not yet been charged. But the Crown Prosecution Service has admitted it had enough evidence to prosecute Jenner all along for the sexual abuse of at least nine children. But it may be too late. The very busy Baron Jenner of Braunstone now claims to be suffering from dementia. And yet he's voted in the House of Lords on 203 occasions since he was since diagnosed. Yeah, and, and, and again, it's dual, it's dual standards, isn't it? So if he's good enough to vote, he's good enough to stand trial? Yeah, it still sticks in the craw. I was about to say, it still matters to you. Oh, oh absolutely, it? yeah, yeah. What's been going through your head? Uh, what might have been, basically, for these kids' sake. Have you ever met this man? We asked Richard Kerr to identify his abusers from photographs. What about this man? Yes. OK, he's a former member of Parliament. Yeah, I know. I mean, everybody, yes. Manchester. Cyril Smith? Or Smithy? Cyril Smith was a prominent member of Parliament whose sexual abuse of children over a period of decades was so rampant that the Crown Prosecution Service has now formally admitted it was negligent in failing to prosecute him. Richard Kerr knew him intimately. He's got a scar down there. Did he rape you? He didn't rape, we just had oral sex. He, he oral sexed me. He was a notorious pedophile, wasn't he? He was a hateful... And snake. This man was a snake in the grass. Just before we get into this interview with Tom O'Carroll, I just want to state that it's been twice now that it's been found the Home Office has been funding Pi. Charles Oxley and Tim Hulbert, both on separate occasions, have come out and said that they have seen payments from the Home Office, the government funding the paedophile information exchange. Tell us what PI was all about, the paedophile information exchange. PI was an organisation uh, for people who had a sexual attraction uh, to children and we thought our illegal um, interest in children ought to be made legal if uh, it concerned relations with uh, young people who were consenting to a relationship if they were willingly involved. Tom O'Carroll is a self-confessed unrepentant pedophile and one of the founding members of the Pedophile Information Exchange. He now shies away from advocating the age of four. Too easily misunderstood, he says. Uh, the age of four came into it insofar as children by that age are normally verbal and can normally say whether they are uh, liking a particular kind of activity or not. You believe and advocate that it should be OK for an adult to have consenting sexual relations with a child aged 
10, so long as it doesn't involve penetrative sex. Well, the emphasis here is on, the, on consenting, the willing, free, um, uncoerced um, involvement of the child, yes. Now, can I ask you this, though? Do you believe still that the majority of children at the age of 10 can communicate their consent to a sexual act? Yes, I do, yes. Um, so, so I, I, I don't see that that is a problem, communicating their consent. What constitutes consent? the willing involvement of a child. It's really quite simple. But how does one judge that? That is a matter, of, as it is with adult consent, for the people involved. Tom O'Carroll's self-serving views are a chilling insight into the mindset of the pedophiles who achieved positions of great power in British society. O'Carroll and four other members of Pi were prosecuted and jailed in 1981, but a sixth member of the group was identified at the time only as Peter Henderson. He escaped prosecution. OK, I've got another photograph to show you. Mm -hmm. Do you know this man? I know this man. Who is he? This Peter Hayme. Did he have sex with you? Yes, we had oral, well, yes. The pedophile who called himself Peter Henderson was in fact Sir Peter Telford Heyman, deputy head of the British Secret Service, MI6, one of the most powerful men in Britain. Heyman was caught with diaries full of sadistic sexual fantasies about children. But the spy chief was allowed to walk free. He's the one who carried the brown book. What, what was the brown book? Like a brown diary. He put notes on it. What, so he kept notes about what he'd done to you? Maybe what I say. He had a brown dark book. He carried it in his pocket. For decades, powerful men like Heyman were allowed to get away with their crimes. But even today, Tom O'Carroll argues he and other pedophiles should be allowed to have sex with children. You keep saying, by the way, it's sex with children. It's not sex with children. It's sex, most people think, is sexual intercourse, penis in vagina, and um, a, a guy banging away until he gets orgasm. That's not what I mean by sex with children. What are you talking and about? I and don't, I, don't I don't think we should talk in this sort of um, emotive fashion about okay, sex well, with children. Well, what is a less emotive term? Erotic contact with children. And what would that involve? Well, it might involve a, a t a touching or a masturbation. In the warped view of the pedophile information exchange, the only harm caused by an adult having sex with a child occurs later, when the child is supposedly made to feel guilty about it. If they were traumatised, they wouldn't have gone along. You see, that, that's another lie that pedophiles spin. They, tell, they, they say that the kids aren't traumatised. No, 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 me, I, I, no, wait, wait a moment. Believe me, they are traumatised, uh, Tom. Yes, but many years later, as a result well, of being told... Uh, well, it matters because they would not have been traumatised but for being told that they had been abused. So this is the point. You'd say that it's not the paedophile that's caused the abuse, it's the responsible authorities like the police yes, and their parents. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So you don't accept that having sex with a child can cause any kind of... Well, let me out. tell you, we're getting peculiarly hysterical. Many years later, when people are told that they have been abused and it keeps being rammed into them from the media all the time, then that is the feeling they, become to, they come to get. They, think, they come to think, I must be traumatised because people keep telling me so. Okay, That's well, how it happens. Can I put to you, there's something in your book. Mm -hmm. There's a section in your book where you describe the scenario of a little girl sitting on a man's knee. Yes. And he, you, describe approvingly how sexual relations with that little girl can be, quote, negotiated mm -hmm. by hints yeah. and signals. 
mm -hmm. such as complimenting her on her knickers yeah. and yeah. testing her response. Yeah. And what would be the adequate response from that little girl, Tom? Enthusiasm. What would that constitute? How would the little girl show you enthusiasm for you wanting to have sex with her? Let's move away from... No, no, no. From, let's stick to this issue. Well, all right. Let's, let's, so let's stick let, with give, the give issue, me, but let me, me, give, let me address it in my okay, own way. The little girl sitting on your knee, and you've just told her, I like your knickers. Let me address what, what it in my own way. What does that little girl do to indicate that she's willing to consent to have sex with you, Tom? How does somebody indicate willingness to have consent to anything? A little girl cannot possibly be a consenting partner in that kind of power relationship. She's sitting on your knee, for God's sake. Yes, You're she can. You're an adult. Yes, she can. You use the term enthusiasm. What does that little girl do to indicate that she's enthusiastic? I, 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 think, I think that we're going round and round in circles. No, what, what, what is the answer? We're, we're going round and round in circles. I've given you my answer multiple times, so I'll, I'll, I'll finish that. Which is a non-answer. You just can't answer. Well, you think it's a non-answer. I think it's an answer. All right. <laughs> Disgraceful secrets are only now coming to light. Men occupying some of the highest positions in the land whose depraved crimes have scarred a generation of children. But for the victims of this scandal, for those who have lived their lives in pain, there is no walking away from this fight. You realise it's going to boil down to the word of a woman 20 years on, remembering what happened to her when she was between the ages of 6 to 11 years old. Yeah. They're really going to go your credibility, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready for that because I've I've been very open about about my life and everything that's gone on in my life. There's nothing that I've got nothing to hide. I'm lucky to survive, but I survived. Some of the others didn't. I'm the, 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 the door that opens up everything. And to those men who abused you, you are their worst nightmare. Yes. They're, going to, they're going to be lying in bed at night worried that Richard Kerr's evidence is going to catch up with them. They're going to get a knock on the door. Harvey Proctor was another name that seemed to occur looking up the Ellen Gas House. But he vigorously denies any wrongdoing. But thanks to my friends at UK Truth Seekers, they found this information.
Another person that had a residency in the Dolphin Square was Sir Nicholas Fairbairn. He was also embroiled in a lot of scandals and sex abuse. Documents revealed that he had used boys in a sauna and photos taken of him, as well as Cyril Smith. He also campaigned for journalists to stay out of MPs' private lives. Good evening. Sir Nicholas Fairbairn, the outspoken Conservative MP and former Scottish Minister, has died. He was 61. He'd sat in the Commons for 20 years and held his Perth and Kinross seat by just over 2,000 votes at the last election. His death now leaves the government half a dozen seats short of an official Commons majority. Sir Nicholas Fairbairn was one of the most colourful, eccentric MPs of his generation. Often outspoken, his opinions could be as individual and flamboyant as his self-designed clothes. A lawyer by training, he described himself as a wit and bon viveur, and gave his recreations as growling, prowling, scowling and owling. Mrs Thatcher made him Solicitor General for Scotland, but after three years he was forced to resign over the way he'd handled an infamous Glasgow rape case. Nicky Fairburn was never far from controversy. Two years ago, he attacked the anonymity granted to rape victims. Are women some feebleness that they have to be protected? Not at all. They are the tauntresses. He'd become a critic of John Major describing him as a ventriloquist dummy. And he believed backbenchers had a duty to shake up the government from time to time. If you're just going to be drilled in like prisoners in Auschwitz into a lobby, not knowing what you're voting about, not having read the bill, not having taken part in the debate, I mean, that's not democracy. It's stupidity. Nicholas Fairbairn was certainly a maverick, but he was more than that. I think there was also a serious side to him. He passionately believed in parliamentary democracy, in justice. Uh, he was a, a dedicated supporter of the arts, and uh, he loved Scotland and was very knowledgeable in all her heritage, built and natural, deeply committed to their advance and progress, uh, and worked very hard to that end. Sir Nicholas, who lived in a restored castle, held Perth and Kinross with a majority of 2,000. The Scottish National Party will be pressing hard at the by-election. Colin Blaine, BBC News. More than 800 pal So many people have come forward saying they've seen the evidence and this was all covered up. And the evidence destroyed. Let, let's uh, talk now to Mark Watts, editor of the investigative website Exaro News, that's been backing the call for an inquiry. You've been investigating this for, 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 for many months. Uh, let's just start with what Theresa May announced today in the Commons. Uh, does this go far enough? Well... What we heard from Theresa May today was evidence of her having given the whole issue very serious and careful consideration, obviously, with her colleagues. And so far as the statement goes, it does. It's precisely what uh, the original seven MPs were calling for in a joint letter that we broke news of only a month ago. And we've since got about 146 MPs backing that one. Two more now, Theresa May and David Cameron, it seems. Yeah. And it does do, essentially, what's asked for there. But... The devil will be in the detail. Uh, and you believe, presumably, that people should be compelled to give evidence and that that should be something vested in the power of the chair? Well, see, that, that's one example where she had clearly given us some thought. I think uh, it's a panel inquiry we're talking about here, not a judicial one. Hills for style, it works very well for But, but it could then be elevated. Exactly. Yeah. So the, 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 the panel will be able to ask people to come, invite them. They could say no. But if they say no, they'll be embarrassed by that, because why are you saying no? We would like you to give evidence. And if necessary, we can elevate this to a public inquiry so we can compel you. And here's the point. This is what's been thought about. Will someone really say no and make the inquiry go through those stages? It would be highly embarrassing before they've even given a jot of evidence. You've been researching this, as I say, for, 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 for many months, for years. Um, Peter McKelvey, the former child protection manager, he's given an interview today, the first one for a couple of decades, for 20 years, saying that he believes as many as 20 abusers were involved right at the top of British politics, without, obviously, naming <laughs> names. Um, how... How serious is this, given the sort of people we're talking about at the heart of the British establishment? Well, Tim, we've been investigating this and publishing stories for some two years, and um, I spent two years not naming people. Very good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I hope that will change. Um, 
I believe that this will prove to be the biggest political scandal in post-war Britain. This will put it beyond cash for questions by quite a long way. It will put it beyond MPs' expenses. It will put it beyond the Profumo affair. I think that this will be uh, an incredibly unsettling and dreadful um, scandal as we learn more about it. Uh, again, without identifying anyone or jigsaw identification, are we looking at people who are still in the public eye, who have been in politics for many years? Uh, yes. Um, I mean, on the whole, um, they're perhaps no longer at the top of politics, typically. Um, I mean, I'm very conscious of what uh, Peter uh, has said. We've obviously spoken to him a lot in the, in the past at Exero. And um, we've been f we, we started off um, with, with Elm Guest House, uh, which was, it was a paedophile brothel. That's what it was. And it was frequented by politicians. Now, you have to be very careful, because it doesn't necessarily mean that if you went there, you were there to abuse boys. And we are talking about boys here. But you have some questions to answer if you did frequent the place. Now, an example, I will name one name because it's, it's come out now and, and he's no longer alive anyway, and that's Cyril Smith. There's no doubt. So even, even the Metropolitan Police has confirmed that uh, he was a frequenter of the place and he went there to abuse boys. And or, so there's only one boy in particular. And I think... We've published a lot of material on XRO, but you can imagine in this kind of investigation, there's a lot of material we have not published mm. because we're working on it. Mm. And I can only give you my view of where I think this is going. And as I say, I think basically um, what Peter's saying is right. But in view of a, a cover-up, uh, and uh, I'm not sure if you saw uh, Lord Tevis on the Ma program, sure. the Ma program yesterday, he thought it was quite possible there could have been a cover-up. But this would have involved collusion with police officers, civil servants and politicians all quietly removing the evidence to prevent any criminal investigation. Well, I have to say, I think Lord Tebbit's comments were very telling, really very telling. And, I, and I, I'll make this point. No one should think for a moment that that has changed. What we've seen from Theresa May is a political will, finally from the very top of the government. And clearly David Cameron uh, and, and I think George Osborne would have been involved in deciding how to handle things. And there's been a change. There's been a change since only Thursday of last week. We got hold of a, a letter that uh, Theresa May had written to Zach Goldsmith in which she had basically said, I'll think about it. I'm not ruling it out, but not yet. Well, here we are a couple of days later. That's a little bit later, but I don't think that's what she meant by later last week. So there's political will now, political realisation. This has to be uncovered. But do not assume for a moment that that is shared everywhere in the establishment. It is not. And there are forces out there right now undermining uh, the efforts to expose this in all sorts of ways. I, uh, just one little example. There are four stories being put out, nonsense stories, which I think are being put out one way or the other in order to eventually be discredited to try to discredit the whole thing. But also some very worried people as well. I think there were going to be some people really looking over their shoulder. This video barely scratches the surface of really what went on there. Uh, what do you do when all these people in positions of power have committed these atrocities? All the evidence has been handed into the police, but it's been destroyed or lost and covered up. As you've seen there recently, Theresa May buried it. Unless some other evidence come out, I don't know what they're going to do, but I firmly believe this all happened. Mary Moss continues her mission. She's brilliant. Um, she needs all the help she can get. Um, she's still fighting for child's rights and their welfare. Brilliant. Completely brilliant. But uh, I just don't know. I might do another video on this because there is still loads more evidence. But for now, I'm having to leave it because it's just a bit too much. I mean, basically what's happening is these people in power have been taking kids from all over the country, abusing them in several different places. Some of them are even being punted off to Amsterdam in use of brothels there and snuff films. Yes, it does happen. It's really heartbreaking. Anyway, guys, I'll leave it to you. Make your own opinion of it. 
I'll see you on the next one.